So a couple more examples for this integration by parts, just to finish this section off on the use of this. This is actually a very powerful tool, integration by parts, um, used, in, used often. So last time we were looking at situations where if there was an x term in there, something like 3x, which is the one we were just looking at, for example, when I differentiate 3x, the x disappears, so then the integral becomes one we can do. That's the way it works. However, we don't always let the x term be u. So part of the problem with using this um, integration by parts is knowing which bit to call u and which bit to call dv. Because you have a choice. Okay? And the only way to sort it out is to look at a few examples. And the textbook actually gives different examples and sort of goes through why we picked that particular one to do. So use the textbook. It actually does explain that part quite well. Uh, but I want to look at a couple of specific examples. So, um, what we're going to do in this particular case, and you'll see why it works when we go through it, if I've got a, a natural logarithm term in there, we tend to let that bit be u. So, let u equal log x. So that means dv is going to be x. So now we differentiate u, and what do we get? Who knows that standard differential? Differential of log x. No, 1 over x. Thank you, Andrew. 1 over x. And if I've let dv equal x, then I need to integrate that to get v. So v is the integral of x, which is? No, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. Yes, half x squared. Okay, don't forget, no power on the x, it means x to the 1, or 1, power 1. Or x, or half x squared, either way. It means the same thing. Yeah. So you can read, write it either way. So now we put this into... Um, the integration by parts formula, integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. That's, this will appear on the exam paper, but, you know, there's another one of those ones that's not that difficult to remember. If you use it enough anyway, like I do. So now we just plug them in. The first stage will be this, just plugging them in. Integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. So you can see what we've called each bit. That's what we write down. Notice that x cancels with one of these x's on the top, so we're just left with the integral of x over 2. So it becomes writing the x squared over 2 term first, or even writing as a half x squared, log x, minus, I can bring the half outside the integral, so it becomes the integral of x dx. It's not critical to do that, but I always tend to take the, half, the constants outside. You could leave it as x over 2 inside, and then integrate that. Minus a half. What's the integral of x? x squared over 2 plus c.
So notice you're leaving it like this, instead of calling this a quarter, we can see that x squared over 2 term is common to both. So we can take that outside the bracket and factorise, leaving log x minus a half inside plus c. So that would be a nice way to leave the answer. Okay, so fair amount of algebra involved with these things. Tidying up steps worth thinking about shows good technique, but of course um, this is the right answer. <clears throat> Excuse me, this line is the right answer. You don't need to factorise. I mean, I've been looking at you getting it right. It's the main thing before trying to tidy it. Yep. Yes, because I've taken it outside the bracket. Because it's common to both terms, I can take it outside the bracket. If you remember back to this idea of factorising, if I multiply out this line here, then I'll get back to this line. x squared over 2 times log x gets me back to this bit. x squared over 2 times a half gets me back to that bit. So all I've done is just written it and factorise it to look, make it simpler to use. If you had to use this formula to calculate the area under a curve, then it would be much quicker to put your values into this form than that form. So it's worth trying to do it. Okay? If you're designing a formula for someone to use, then make it as easy to use as possible. Because that's what we're doing at the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's have a look at one more example. It doesn't always come out first time. When you're using integration by parts, it doesn't always come out first time. We have to use it more than once. Look at this example. Just wait till you've written it down and then we'll have a look at it. If we look at this problem, um, if you think back to the first one, or the ones we are looking at last week where we had just one x in it, if I differentiate x, the x disappears and therefore I can do the integral because there's, there's only one uh, variable inside this time, the sine of x term. However, there's a problem this time, which is what? Well, no. What happens if I differentiate x squared? That's integrate, differentiate it. 2x, the x hasn't disappeared. What can I do then? differentiate it again and then the x will disappear. So what we have to do is if we've got an x squared term in here, I use integration by parts twice and then this second, this x will disappear and we can do it. What, I, what do you think we do if there's an x cubed term in here? Do it three times and so on, okay? And it obviously gets longer. It gets quite long to do. But basically, all we're doing is applying the the, the rule of partial um, integration by parts more than once. So it's just a case of being careful how you set it out and not so you don't make mistakes. So let's have a look at this example and see how it works. So I let u equal x squared. So that means I've got to let dv equal sine x. So what do I do with the u? Differentiate it to get du. To x. What do I do with dv? I integrate it to get v. What's the integral of sine x? Minus cos x. Now don't worry about adding the c's till the very end. Now plug them into my integration by parts formula. And if you do your revision as you should, by the time you've finished, you'll be saying this in your sleep. So what also already gone wrong? v to v equals u v minus integral v du. 
So it's the integral of uh, u dv, which is, in other words, the problem, what we've got to do, equals uv x squared times v, which is minus cos x minus the integral of v, which is minus cos x times du, which is 2x. u dv equals u v minus integral v du. That's all I've done. I've just put those in. Tidying this up before we try and go a step further. Minus cos x times x squared makes the whole thing negative. So this becomes minus x squared cos x. Looking at this, I can bring the minus 2 outside the integral, but the minus times the minus gives the plus. So this becomes plus 2 times the integral of cos x times x dx. Now the fun starts, because if I look at this, I can't do that integral. Remember, the whole point of doing integration by parts is that we're left with an integral that we can do. But I can't do this integral. It's not a standard integral. However, if I applied integration by parts again and let u equal x, then it would disappear. So we've got a problem a bit like one we've already done. So what I do is I now let u equal x and dv equal cos x for this thing. So, well, no, yeah, see what you're saying, Daniel. No, it wouldn't be three equals. What I'm doing is I'm taking this part here and then just using integration by parts on this. And then when I've done integration by parts on this, then I can plug it back into this formula again. Okay? So let's just focus on this part. So now use integration by parts on this. Let u equal exactly the same procedure. x. So now I can differentiate it. 1, uh, and that's disappeared, that part of it now, okay? So the x is gone, which is good, that's what we wanted. So I'm going to let u equal x, then dv must equal the other bit, which is cos x. So v is the integral of cos x, which is sine x. And then again, we plug them into the, the formula for integrating by parts. So we can again write this formula. Integral of u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. And then again we plug the bits in. Can you configure what that part Yeah, you can really. Now we're just going to write down the. Actually, we're just interested in the right hand side down, and you're right. Yeah. So that equals uv minus integral v du. u is x, v is sine x, minus the integral of v, which is sine x, du, which is just 1. So now, finally, we've ended up with a standard integral that we can do. So this equals x sine x. Uh, sine goes to negative cos. So this is minus, minus cosine of x. Let's see. Exactly, yes, that's right. Which equals x sine x plus cos x, 
plus C. Now this is our asterisk. This is the solution to um, the previous part here. This. So instead of this integral, we're going to put in that solution we had there. Oh, let's just check. I made, took into account that two that was there. Did I do that at the end? Um, two. No, I didn't, did I? So this is all times by two. So in other words, so what have I got to do? This is two times this. and two times this, and two times this. So we end up with two x sine x plus cos x. Again, we don't need to put the c inside the bracket, that just goes at the end. So I had a feeling I was going to forget that little two at the beginning of the end's rule. Two x sine x plus two cos x. You could expand out and call it that, yep. Yeah. You could expand out the bracket and call it 2x sine x plus 2 cos x if you wanted to, or you could leave the 2 outside. Okay? For the, for the asterisk bit here, I've just got to times by 2, with Daniel, because if you remember back at the beginning of this bit, it was 2 times this integral. So it's 2 times the answer. Okay? This is maybe an example of where it might have been a good idea to have left the two inside the integral, actually, and then I wouldn't have made that uh, little um, error. I don't know, I just can't see what, I don't know what part you're talking about. This one. This one. Yeah. Now we need to rewrite this here, but instead of this part, I write the solution to the bit I've just done. So the finally, the integral of x squared sine x dx equals and this is where my writing goes small the integral of x squared sine x dx which was our original integral turns out to be um, minus x squared cos x plus that answer that we've just done. So minus x squared cos x plus 2x sine x plus cos x plus C. Uh, let's talk about simplifying this. If you look at it, I've got a cosine term, a sine term, another cosine term. We've talked a little bit about compound angle formulae where you've got cos and sine functions, wave functions together and actually next year we'll talk about how you can combine a sine and a cosine wave to get one sine wave with a phase angle and so to go part way towards that the, we would generally do this, we would rearrange it and I would expand this bracket to get this plus 2x sine x plus 2 cos x which at first sight would make it look a bit longer. You know, I've expanded out that bracket. But then I would collect together terms involving cos x. So I'd factorise the cos x bits. And I'd have cos x outside the bracket, leaving 2 minus x squared inside the bracket, plus the 2x sine x term plus c. And now I've got one term involving the cosine function and one term involving the sine function. And next year we'll talk about, in fact we have already talked about this at the BTEC, 
level, if you've got a cosine function, the, the, the function or the part that goes in front of it is, represents the amplitude of this cosine function. So this bit represents the amplitude, and this bit represents the amplitude of the sine function. So we've got a combined, a combined sine and cosine wave, and if we plotted that on autograph, we'd get this combined sine and cosine wave function. So that might well be how I'd decide to leave the function or the solution. So going back to the beginning of this question, okay, we've got this to integrate, oh, wrong one, this to integrate here. And when I started talking about these integration techniques at the beginning of this section of the course, Philippe, when I started talking about these things, when I started talking about these things, um, the whole point of these other integration techniques is to get this integral, this one in this case, to look like one of your table of standard integrals. So what I've done is here, I've used this method of integration by parts, which tries to get it to look like a standard integral. So I apply the rule of integration by parts and I get to here. It doesn't look like a standard integral because I've still got x appearing twice. So I apply the rule of standard of integration by parts again and then I end up with an integral here that is a standard integral, the integral of sine x. So that the whole point of this process is to get my integral to look like a standard integral, which I can do. And then when I've done that, here's my answer. There.